subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of February. Indian court orders death for 38 for deadly 2008 serial bomb blasts. Top US General McKenzie warns of Islamic State presence in Afghanistan. and Nepal's ruling coalition fails to reach consensus on US funded MCC deal. And now for all the details. An Indian court on Friday sentenced 38 persons to death and ordered life in prison for 11 others for a series of bomb blasts in 2008 in Ahmedabad city that killed more than 50 people. A group called the Indian Mujahideen had claimed responsibility for the explosions. A defense lawyer said they would appeal the verdict in a higher court. A special sessions court in India on Friday sentenced 38 men to death and ordered life in prison for 11 others for a series of bomb blasts in 2008 in Ahmedabad city that killed at least 56 people and wounded more than 200. A group called the Indian Mujahideen had claimed responsibility for the explosions on July 26, 2008 that badly shook the western state of Gujarat where Hindu Muslim riots in the year 2002 are believed to have killed thousands. Judge AR Patel ordered the punishment after the prosecution pressed for the death sentence describing the incident as a rarest of rare case in which innocent lives were lost. आज टोटल 38 एट एक्यूज को ऑनरेबल डेजिग्नेटेड जज फॉर बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट केसेस उन्होंने 38 एट एक्यूज को आज हैंगिंग किया है और 11 एक्यूज को लाइफ टाइम की सजा दी है अ डिफेंस लॉयर सेड दे हैड शॉर्ट लीनियंट सेंटेंसेस एज द कॉन्विक्ट्स हैव ऑलरेडी स्पेंड मोर देन 13 इयर्स इन प्रिजन एंड दैट दे वुड डेफिनेटली अपील द वर्डिक्ट इन अ हायर कोर्ट इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान Lashing out at the ruling PTI-led government over the recent hike in petrol prices and its economic and foreign policies, PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz said that the people of Pakistan are looking towards the opposition, adding that the risk of a no-trust motion in the parliament should be taken now. This comes as opposition parties have decided to hold anti-government long march rallies over the issue of rising inflation. Opposition PMLN party vice president Maryam Nawaz on Thursday slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan over the recent hike in petrol prices and his economic and foreign policies and said that the opposition's planned no trust motion to topple the incumbent government is a risk that should be taken now. Talking to reporters Maryam said she was hopeful of the success of the proposed no trust move by the opposition because Imran Khan is on his last legs as he has destroyed the economy and failed to control the frequent price hike to main ye samajhti hu ki agar opposition is waqt act nahi karegi to opposition bhi barabar ki log usko barabar ka zimmedar thehrayenge to humne humne apne awam ke paas wapas jana hai इलेक्शन में हमने उन्हीं के पास वापस जाना है तो लोग ये पूछेंगे कि जब हम तकलीफ से गुजर रहे थे तो आप कहाँ थे बाकी मैं ये समझती हूँ कि इन ताला उम्मीद है कि कामयाबी होगी क्योंकि इमरान खान साहब इस वक्त अपनी लास्ट लेग्स में हैं तो मैं ये समझती हूँ कि ये एक ऐसा रिस्क है जो लेना चाहिए मीन वाइल ओपोजिशन पाकिस्तान पीपल्स पार्टी चेयरमैन बिलावल बुतो जरदारी also said on Thursday that every member of the parliament would run a campaign to bring a no confidence motion against the PTI led government the opposition parties have also announced anti government long march rallies on february 27 and in late march over the issue of rising inflation more on news from pakistan Microsoft co-founder turned philanthropist Bill Gates visited Pakistan on Thursday and met Prime Minister Imran Khan to discuss polio eradication. Pakistan and Afghanistan are the last countries where polio remains endemic. 
Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates met with Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday during his first ever visit to South Asian nation to discuss polio eradication. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, of which Gates is co-chair, is part of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, a major project between governments and international organizations. Taking to Twitter, he said he is optimistic that if everyone remains vigilant, polio can be eradicated in Pakistan. He also attended a meeting of the Afghanistan Interministerial Coordination Cell along with Pakistan National Security Advisor Mohit Yusuf and met with Ministry of Health and Planning officials. He was also conferred Pakistan's second highest civilian award by the country's president. Pakistan, along with neighboring Afghanistan, is one of the two countries in the world where polio continues to circulate. No children have been paralyzed by wild polio in Pakistan in more than a year, but the virus was detected in December in sewerage samples in Khyber Pakhtunwa province. Moving on. Government employees in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concerns over non-payment of their salaries for the past five to six months and over an ordinance brought by the government that has stripped them off their permanent government positions. Ad hoc employees in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over non payment of their salaries for the past several months and over an ordinance brought by the government that has ripped them off their permanent government positions. The disgruntled employees claim that due to changes to an ordinance by Pakistan PM Imran Khan's PTI led government, ad hoc and contractual employees who were appointed after December 31, 2020, are being rendered jobless, and those before that period, during tenure of previous PMLN government, are not being paid salaries for the past five to six months. They demanded re-regularization based on merit. And this is a very difficult thing to say that if one government does a job under the law and the next government does the same job, government के किए हुए काम को गैर कानूनी और गैर आईनी डिक्लेयर किया जाए कहा जाए और अपने काम को आईनी समझा जाए मैं ये समझता हूं कि ये तकरीबन ये यकीनन दोहरा معیار है और गवर्नमेंट को ये معیار तर करना चाहिए हमारी रिक्वेस्ट है कि आप हटा के कल को का दरवाजा जैसे एक्ट में बंद किया गया है इसको बंद रहने दें और जिन लोगों को आपने मुस्तकिल कर दिया इनको करें और आने वाले लोगों को आप पीस ऑफ माइंड दें सुकून दें आप लोगों को नौकरियां दें रोजगार दें लेकिन पीस ऑफ माइंड के साथ the Association of Government Employees blame that this is not the case in Pakistan where scores of employees have been regularized as per the previous legislation. But the people in the illegally occupied region still do not have access to equal rights and have to face exploitation. In news from Nepal, a meeting of Nepal's ruling coalition held on Friday concluded without reaching any consensus regarding the ratification of the US-funded Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact Agreement in the parliament. The next meeting in this regard will be held on Sunday. The meeting of Nepal's five-party ruling coalition held on Friday concluded without reaching any consensus regarding the ratification of the US-funded Millennium Challenge Corporation or MCC compact agreement in the parliament. The next meeting in this regard will be held on Sunday, reports suggest. The Millennium Challenge Corporation, a US government aid agency, had agreed in 2017 to provide 500 million US dollars in grants to fund an electricity transmission line and road improvement project in Nepal. Washington says the funds come with no strings and do not need to be repaid. However, opponents say that the agreement would undermine local laws and that Nepal would not have sufficient oversight over the board directing projects. Major political parties, including those forming the ruling coalition, are divided over whether to accept the money. Earlier on Wednesday, capital Kathmandu also witnessed fierce protest over the issue by small communist factions. The demonstrators asserted that MCC is not in the interest of Nepal. Reports suggest at least 123 activists had been detained and nine police personnel injured in the melee as police had to use tear gas and water cannon to disperse the protesters. Moving on. The Islamic State Khorasan has been a major security challenge for the Taliban government since they swept to power in Afghanistan last August. Six months since Taliban's rule, the U.S. Central Command Chief General Kenneth McKenzie has expressed concerns about the presence of the Islamic State in Afghanistan. 
He said that America is still sorting out what is going to happen there. The U.S. Central Command Chief General Kenneth McKenzie on Thursday expressed concerns about the presence of the Islamic State or ISIS, an ideological foe of the Taliban in Afghanistan. In an interview shared on Facebook by the U.S. Central Command Dari Pashto, McKenzie said that America is still sorting out what is going to happen since the Taliban came into power. Taliban seized control of Afghanistan in August last year after U.S.-led foreign forces withdrew and Western-backed government collapsed. Since then, humanitarian crises have worsened dramatically. So I think you know what we see developing in Afghanistan is ungoverned and undergoverned spaces, which is areas where ISIS traditionally flourish and where I think there is a risk. We know that ISIS does, in fact, have, have a practical desire to carry out ex external attacks, attacks against the United States, the homeland of the United States, and attacks against the homelands of our neighbors in Europe, and our friends in, in Europe and in other places. So I am concerned uh, about what's happening in Afghanistan. ISIS Khorasan claimed to have carried out several attacks in recent months on Taliban targets remains unreconciled to the movement. Earlier, the Taliban Defense Ministry denied reports over the presence of foreign troops in Afghanistan and said that the security forces of the Islamic Emirate are ready to fight the terrorists. Meanwhile, the delegation of the Islamic Emirate, led by the acting foreign minister Amir Khan Mutaki, arrived in Kabul on Thursday after a five-day visit to the Gulf state of Qatar. The delegation met with the envoys of the European Union, 16 European nations envoys of Gulf states, as well as with Islamic scholars. According to Abdul Kahar Balki, a spokesman for the foreign ministry, the meeting focused on the humanitarian situation in Afghanistan, higher education, capacity development, 